Not bad. Here comes his companion. I think they're a team. Run over to check on his buddy. Let's see if we can get him. There we go. Looking at me like what's going to do something. I'm not sure what's going on, but now see the squirrels back out in the open. What's up, buddy? What's going on, bud? It's coming back out in the open. Not looking well. How you doing, buddy? Squirrels you gotta be a little careful with. Not as habituated as the rabbits were. Hey little bud. Okay, come on, relax. You seem yeah, he's he's uh, he may be ill, but he's not Going back to that same spot. All right, I keep checking on him. Right? Okay, well, I think I've uh, found a mystery. I mean, I don't know exactly what's wrong with her, but she's not feeling well. But uh, I could wonder why she was going back in the corner there. And she's underneath the dryer vent. I guess over the over time they learned that when they pass by, when the dryer's on and running, they feel that heat. See, it's running right now, and she's she's been improving ever since she had a little bit to eat a little while ago. Then when the dryer wasn't running. She went back in the open to try and get what little sun there is, a little bit of warmth. That's incredible. They're not, not unsurprising, I guess. They're intelligent, but I mean, you just never think about your dryer vent as being a little micro ecosystem. Never mind the fact that the dryer vent needs to be clean. <laughs> She's under the dryer vent. That's, that's really nice hot air coming out of there. She's not doing well. Let me see if I can put her in a box and... See what she's doing here. Hey little guy. Hey little fella. What are you doing? I'm trying to put you in this box, huh? What do you say? Hey, go in the box. There you go, little guy. Well, I've been calling you a girl. You're a guy.
just picked up and the bell chimes are ringing in October. Kind of a fitting send off. I'm gonna uh, put the little guy out of his misery. That's between me and him. Yeah, well, when I took him back to the woods, he perked up again in the box. I examined him and he had a single botfly under his chin that I removed with tweezers. In fact, it seemed like it was about ready to come out on its own. He keeps moving around. And he's sleeping hard and breathing good, so... Leave him in the box. Cover him up with a little blanket. And uh, let him sleep. Well, unfortunately I got him in the box and I was going to check him out and either take him to the uh, shelter or just euthanize him myself. And uh, I did a quick physical exam of him. Yeah. Once he was, you know, pretty calm and he had a bot fly right around his... I've seen mud flies around the head before, but this one was um, really right, right up under his jaw, right into his esophagus almost. So maybe it was putting pressure. I've never known a squirrel to die from just one mud fly, but uh, there's the miserable creature right there. You can see I pulled him out and. Even though I pulled out the bot fly, and uh, you can see the disgusting bot fly has been crawling around since I removed him. Yeah, I guess bot flies are not just in Florida, they're pretty common. They really are revolting creatures, parasites. But, uh, this is a very healthy squirrel, really, and up until recently, I mean, I saw it, but, uh, it's probably something about with the bot fly being right up under his chin and the esophagus or something like that that either made him sick or who knows. But yeah, the bot fly was the problem. Of course, I removed the bot fly with... It's fairly simple to remove them once you have the squirrel under control. But by then the squirrel was, his, it was a wild squirrel. It wasn't really, just uh, too weak of course to recover. So, we'll bury the squirrel. And I'll definitely kill this disgusting thing. Uh, you know, the parasite, of course, usually, the, like I've had squirrels with bot flies before. And uh, in Florida, it's a little different because in Florida, I have a real close relationship with them. So I can provide them food and water and give them their strength to fight these guys off or else catch them. But here in North Carolina, these are pretty wild squirrels. I, this guy never, just, you know, never really was a friend of mine. He, would you know run back from forth from the forest it wasn't until he got really sick that they noticed him kind of collapsed over by the feeder and then he went down under the house and and of course that's, that's a different problem than the bot flies that get in florida the life cycle is involves the mosquitoes and we used to not have that many mosquitoes up here in the high elevations but it's been warmer and warmer you know with so we're getting more mosquitoes than we used to. More, more disease and parasite vectors. Okay. We'll put an end to this. Of course, the bot fly will. Will die without its host.
Or you can see the business end of him. He'll die without his host. And usually it's designed to where the host doesn't die and the botfly continues its life cycle. But not in this case. There's something unique about the location of this one. But enough of that poor guy. We'll put him to his final rest and uh, put an end to that butterfly. Um, beef. Befitting the botfly status in life, I drove a stake right through it. And you can see it's full of fluid, but it's not blood. It's kind of a misconception. They don't they don't suck blood. They just kind of suck the vital juices out of the body. Nasty things. That's his kingdom back there. We'll put him back there. Whenever an animal passes away like that, you never know exactly why. Don't really want other animals to consume it, so we'll bury him under a deep and under a rock so nobody can dig him up and eat him and potentially injure him or some other animal. <laughs>